Hi, it's Allie. I'm back. Um, I, today, I'm doing another, uh, vlog about, um, evangelical stuff. Um, so this is going to be part of my, um, ex-evangelical series. I, um, the reason why, I, I wasn't even sure if I wanted to continue to do this series because, um, I have a little bit of a cold, by the way, so, like, please excuse um, if my voice sounds a little bit weird or if I'm coughing, but, um, the hashtag expose, uh, Christian schools is, like, popping off right now, so, um, I wanted to come and say, you know, a couple of things about it. So, um, where to begin? Well, first of all, I want to say, um, the person who created expose, um, hashtag expose Christian schools is, um, Chris Stroop. Chris is, uh, on Twitter. You can find his Patreon. Um, you should support him. He's doing really good, really important work um, in the uh, ex-evangelical community and in doing explainers of evangelicalism for people who aren't familiar with it. Um, he's great. I'm going to put a link to his website in um, the notes. Uh, also, um, if you're interested in hearing about evangelicals, um, <coughs> Check out uh, the Exvangelical podcast, which is hosted by Blake Chastain. Um, Blake is the one who in invented the Exvangelical portmanteau. Um, he's done really great interviews, and he's a great person to uh, listen to. Um, they're both on Twitter. I'm going to put uh, a link to his podcast in the notes. Um, there's also a, there's like a list of tweets that sort of get into um, the... <sighs> The principles of Calvinism um, that go by the um, acronym TULIP, which uh, I wasn't familiar with the acronym. I don't think I was even like familiar with the actual um, tenets of Calvinism, even though I was like soaking in it when I was a child. But um, it, it's really illuminating, so I'm going to grab that, and that's also going to go in the notes. So that's um, if you want a little homework and that's something that you're interested in learning more, um, please go and check all that stuff out. Um, so, I think what I'm going to do first is I'm going to, I've made a couple of notes. I have my sticky notes like I always do. And um, first I'm going to uh, review um, <clears throat> some of the counter arguments, um, if you want to call them that, that have been made um, in the ex Exposed Christian Schools um, hashtag and then I will talk about my own personal experience um, as someone who uh, went to a Christian school, uh, a Southern Baptist school. So, <coughs> um, once again, I'm sorry about the coughing. There's, I already took some medicine. There's not a whole lot I can do. This is kind of time sensitive. It's happening now. So um, I wanted to go ahead and do this even though um, I'm the coughing and I'm, I'm really sorry about that. But, um, okay, so... Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I wasn't sure I was going to make more videos uh, about evangelicalism because, like, I don't know, um, like, one person can't speak for all ex-evangelicals. Um, my experiences are, you know, unique to me. And um, additionally, it's, like, it's a really difficult subject for me to talk about because um, it's still, uh, like, hideously painful. Um, because what we're talking about when we're talking about, um, people who have essentially been, um, hounded out of the evangelical church, which, which is the thing that happens, um, is we're talking about people who are the survivors of abuse. And, um, the evangelical religion is, in my opinion, inherently abusive. It ha it's like got abuse built into it. So, um... People who are criticizing or want to uh, get ex-evangelicals to be quiet, um, you need to keep in mind that you are talking about a group of survivors. <coughs> and if you are the kind of person who's like, I believe survivors, well, then you need to believe ex-evangelicals too. Um, and that's just that. So, if, if you're not the kind of person who believes survivors, I don't know why you're watching this video, because uh, this content's not for you. 
but thanks for the view metrics, I guess. But, um, you know, if, if as feminists and, you know, people on the like left spectrum, if we are going to believe survivors, then we have to believe the survivors of spiritual abuse of the child abuse that happens within churches. And it is delicate to talk about people's religion. And I know you guys don't want to do that because of, um, you know, because of the massive amounts of Islamophobia that we've had problems with um, since 9-11 because of um, anti-Semitism that is <coughs> perpetuated against Jewish people. And so I know people on the, like, left spectrum can... Um, God, I'm so sorry. Um, can, people on the left spectrum can get really twitchy when it comes to talking about religion. But the thing that you have to keep in mind is Christianity in America is the majority religion. Um, so when you're talking about the effects of Christianity on um, the political landscape, on people's lives, you're talking about the majority. And so that's a different... That's different. Um, and there are certainly people within the spectrum of Christianity, which is a, it's a big thing with a lot of people in it. Some versions of it seem fine, I guess. I don't know. I'm not really familiar with what, I'm not familiar with the kinds of Christianity that are fine. I'm familiar with the kinds of Christianity that are horrendously not fine. But if you are within Christianity and you find that to be something that is, useful for you in your life and it's your belief system I'm not attacking you um but you have to understand that Christianity is a spectrum and just because it was good to you does not mean that it is good to everyone I feel like um even a a light review of the history of Christianity should um inform us that Christianity has not um historically in total been uh, great uh, to people that it opposes. Um, it's, you know, there have been Christian movements for progressivism. There were, you know, the, of course, the civil rights movement. And there certainly have been things where people have used their faith in positive, um, progressive ways. But um, kind of that's not the majority of the ways that people have used Christianity historically to impact politics and to impact marginalized people. So, like, please just keep that in mind. Um, and that my experiences are mine, and I will talk about them. And, like, if that makes you uncomfortable, that's your business to interrogate why. Not mine. Okay? All right, so let's get started. Okay, so here are the um, major... I've got it right here. The major arguments that people seem um, to be making against, I guess, the existence of the uh, exposed Christian schools, hashtag. <coughs> Number one, what about Muslims? Great. Um, also, I do want to say, um, this is a, um, the hashtag has been subjected to a coordinated 4chan raid. Um... And it's gone from 4chan to Breitbart to Fox News, just like how these things do, because um, <laughs> the right wing is aware, in a way that the left wing apparently is not, that these Christian schools are indoctrination breeding grounds to uh, funnel people from childhood into a um, conservative and regressive political stance. These are their people. This is their base. So, of course, they're going to defend that. But, I mean, that, that is what it is. So, <clears throat> being that these are potentially 4chan arguments, um, we can't take them at face value. Even the, um, don't think that the people making these arguments are making them in good faith. They're probably not. Um, but, like, let's address them anyway. So, uh... Because, like, what about Muslims is never, it, it's never a legitimate argument in um, America. Because American Muslims are not the majority of the population. They don't have majority organized political power. And they are continually marginalized. And um, 
and discriminated against in American society. So, um, not really here for the whataboutism for Muslims. Um, people also did this for Jewish people, um, Orthodox Jewish people. <coughs> Same thing, you know, anti-Semitism is rife on the right. Um, you know, there's problems with it on the left. Also, I'm not Jewish, so I can't really speak to that, um, thoroughly. But I will say that, like, you know, you get 4chan, you get anti-Semitism. So, what about Muslims? I'm not a Muslim. I wasn't raised in Islam. I cannot speak to personal experience with Islam because I don't have any. I don't know anything about it. I don't talk about um, Islam because it's not anything, I don't know anything about it. I don't have opinions on it, um, I, except that it is clearly a religion that is large and has a spectrum of people who believe in it. Um, the same way that Christianity does. If you don't want people to broad brush Christianity, which seems to be part of the, like, super pissiness of this, then you need to stop broad brushing other people's religions. Okay? Um, same thing with Jewish schools. I didn't go to a Jewish school. I'm not Jewish. So I don't have anything to say about that. And that's that. Um, if people who were abused in you know, Muslim or Jewish schools want to speak out, I support them. And, like, anybody who wants to speak out about their abuse, I support you. Um, that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about Christian schools. All right, so, and, and we need to be talking about Christian schools because we never do. Like, we never in America talk about the harms that are perpetuated by conservative Christianity. We just don't. And it's baffling to me because the harms that are perpetuated by conservative Christianity in this country are vast and numerous. And so I do not understand why this is a red line off, off topic. Like nobody wants to talk about it um, because they're like, well, but you know, we're going to offend their religion. Their religion is trying to take away your rights. So are you going to do something about that or not? Because that's what I want to know. I mean, frankly, I am extremely, extremely, extremely grateful to people like Chris and Blake for, for starting these conversations, for starting the ball rolling, to get the dam to break. Because I've, I've been waiting for this for decades. Like, my opinion on, like, you know... Hashtag exvangelical, hashtag um, Christian alt facts, hashtag exposed Christian schools, hashtag exposed Christian homeschooling. My opinion on those things is it's about time. It's been way past time. Because evangelicals have been getting away with murder for years and, and abusing children on a vast scale. And because denying someone their education is abuse. Okay? Like, whether or not you know, someone was subjected to emotional or physical abuse within a Christian school, and many, many people have been. But whether or not that happened to you or not, if you've been denied a proper education like I was, then you've been abused. Because every child has a right to a real education. All right. Argument number two. I went to a Christian school and it was fine. Good for you, I guess. I mean, this is like the same thing when people, you know, it's like uh, people use this uh, example a lot. Like, do you run into somebody else, you know, would you run into somebody else's funeral and be like, my grandma's alive. Like, what's wrong with you? You know, like, I guess good for you, you were lucky. If you didn't get abused in a Christian school, congratulations on winning in the lottery of who gets, like, shit on. I mean, like, I don't understand why people respond to, this is a hashtag of people telling their own personal stories, and that people want to respond to that with, well, nothing happened to me. That's bullshit. You're an asshole. I don't have anything else for that. Like... 
Number three, you're attacking Christianity. Um, Christianity, I mean, I think that talking about, if Christians in this country are so secure that they think that they have the way and that everything about their religion is good and perfect, then they should want to expose the bad actors. They should want to expose them. They should want, why do you want to cover it up? Like, why are we constantly having to deal with people covering this stuff up? And it comes out later, decades later, after people have been destroyed. And, and people just want to be like, well, but you're attacking Christianity. My life story, if that attacks Christianity, well, then I guess Christianity deserves it. Like, it, <laughs> I don't understand how telling what the story of what happened to me within a Christian church is attacking the entire religion of Christianity. That's just factually what happened. Okay? Like, oh, and you know, my family wants to be like, well, you're mad at the church. You're just mad at the church. You're just mad at Jesus. And it's like, okay, I can't be mad at Jesus because I don't believe in him. Disclaimer, not everyone who's left the evangelical church like, loses their belief in God or decides to become an atheist. Some people retain their faith, and that's fine. Whatever you gotta do, or whatever makes sense to you, I support you. But, like, my truth is that I do not believe. Um, sometimes I wish I could. Because it seems comforting to people, but I just don't. And I don't think that I ever would because of the kind of person that I am and <clears throat> you know I, I really really want to stress that as a part of my deconversion process out of evangelicalism and Christianity that I read a lot of books I studied for years I looked into other religions I, tr I you know I tried different religious practices I tried different versions of Christianity and for me, none of them were correct. And so, don't assume that someone who has left the church doesn't know the things that you know and hasn't read the things that you've read. It's insulting. Like, it, don't patronize me. I've, I've read your Bible cover to cover multiple times. I've read books. I've listened to sermons, I have engaged with your ideas, now it's time for you to engage with mine. Or go away. But don't proselytize to me. It's insulting and it's triggering to people who have been through spiritual abuse and child abuse within the church. Do not send Bible verses to people who are talking about child abuse that they suffered within the Christian church. <coughs> like, that should... I, why don't you understand that you can't do that? Like, or that you shouldn't be doing that? I mean, you can do it, but, like, it's a jackass move. Um, don't do that. Let people be. Like, I have had enough Bible verses thrown at me to last five lifetimes. I don't need this. I mean, I want my involvement in so much as it is within the ex-evangelical community, within telling my stories, my involvement is to, is to expose. And I think that Chris's, you know, decision to use the word expose is very accurate because I want people to see what is happening inside these churches. People should know. And if you defend them, then you are defending child abuse. And that's just that. Like, do you support child abusers or do you not? And if you don't, then you need to listen to the survivors and not get immediately bitchily defensive <coughs> about what you perceive as an attack on your religion. There are people within Christianity who are doing bad 
things in the name of Christianity. That's just factual. Okay? Like, and if you can't handle that, then you need to get out of the discourse and leave it alone. That's that. Okay, this is the last one I have, number four. Other schools are also bad. Oh, God. Okay, um, I mean, I guess that's not what we're talking about. Um, you know, like, other schools are bad to people don't get right educations in other schools. I mean, the thing is, if a child does not receive a proper education within the context of a public school, that is bad. No one's saying it's not, okay? We talk about the problems within public schools as a part of the political discourse in America. We talk about that a lot. What we do not talk about is the problems with homeschooling and the problems with private schools and the religious schools. We don't. We don't talk about them. And, I, and, and that is not right. And it is, it's a very different proposition to, uh, they're doing construction across the street, so I apologize if there's construction noises. <coughs> but I'm, I'm, I want to do this and I'm going to get it done. Um, the proposition of a child did not get a good education within a system where ostensibly we are trying to give children good educations that is bad, but do you know what's worse is having your chance for an education deliberately stolen from you by the adults around you who don't want you to be educated. Because if they know that if you're educated, they're pro you're probably going to leave the church. Like deliberately isolating children and preventing them from getting an education is what we're talking about here. We're not talking about the system failed. We're not, that is the system. The system is designed so that you don't get the education. And people are paying out the nose for this too, which is ridiculous. But if you don't get an education, that's bad. But it's <laughs> having a system that's set up to have no checks, no balances, no one reviewing it to make sure that people don't know the thing, basic things that they should know. That's a different problem. And that's a problem that we don't talk about ever. So, I don't know. Like, that's what, I mean, apples and oranges. Like, you know, this is just like deflecting whataboutism, look at me, I'm fine, you know, that didn't happen to me, so I guess it isn't real. I mean, it's just deflection and bullshit. Like, and, and, and it's egregious that this is happening on a hashtag that is about people who are survivors of abuse. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. All right, so let's talk about my personal experiences within a Christian church. Number one, um, we had very, very long recess. Like, into middle school, we had two-hour recesses a day, um, in addition to also having um, physical education class, PE class, several times a week. We had Bible class. We did art sometimes and we had a uh, full time blocked out every week for chapel. So why are we wasting? I mean, they basically it was like go across the street to this field that the church also owns and like go play for two hours a day. Oh, no, a cat is barfing. OK, I'm going to get that when I get done with this. I apologize again. Um, I don't have time to cut this, so I'm just going to, like, do it and put it up. So um, why would we have so much time for recess? Why would we have so much time, multiple hour long, multiple 
times a week Bible classes that were bizarre. Um, like, beyond belief bizarre. Um, even by the standards of a uh, regular evangelical Bible class, the man who taught our Bible class was a weird person. Um, why did that happen? Well, um, because once you get done being like, hey kids, the earth's 6,000 years old, and men walked with the dinosaurs. Like, you don't, I mean, <laughs> the creation science stuff is not like an extensive curriculum, let's say. You can blow through that in about a month, and then like, what are you going to do with your time, right? Um, they had a library at the school that only had, like, um, evangelical, like, approved books. Um, so it was, it was very slender in its, uh, offerings, shall we say. It's basically, um, Little House on the Prairie and the Chronicles of Narnia were, like, the extent of, oh, and, uh, A Wrinkle in Time. Basically, we're like the extent of our uh, school library's fictional offerings. Um, that was it. We really didn't have anything else. Um, we're, you're not learning. Like, you're not learning things when you're spending this much time farting around, wasting time. You know, and I think this kind of leads into my next point, which is that, like, I left this school with huge gaps in my basic knowledge that follow me to this day. Um, it was hideously embarrassing for most of my um, early adult life that there were things that um, secular people assumed that everyone kind of had a base knowledge of that I just didn't know um, at all. And I, there was so much of it that I can't even begin to tell you all of it. Um, you know, and there's things that you know are wrong. Like, once you've deconverted out of the church, like, you know the evolution stuff is wrong. Because they make such a big, stinky deal out of it. And so, you know, you kind of put in your head, like, okay, that's not right. So, like, I don't, but I, I don't know what is right. You know, like, you know, you're like, I don't know what the truth is. I don't know what the truth is about this stuff. You know, they're also blatantly teaching things that are super racist, like the um, Children of Ham stuff. Look that up and have a great time with it, because it's horrendous. Um, you know, the, the idea that, like, there is a... Jesus didn't really die for everybody. Jesus just died for the, like, chosen people. And uh, most of the chosen people are going to be white. Um, they're pretty pretty explicit about that, um, when you kind of get down to it. Um, the history stuff that I got was, uh, super wrong, and to this day, I'm still finding things that, um, my, you know, Josh, my husband, he'll be like, that's not, that's not what happened, and, you know, then I'll have to look it up, because if you learn something about Charlemagne when you're 12, you, there's not, like, a lot of opportunities to go back and review that, um, unless it comes up again, which it may not, you know, and I don't know how many of those things are still in my head, right? Like, I don't, I don't know. You, you can't know that. Like, what do I know that's just wrong? Um, what do I know that's just, like, factually untrue? Um, I do the best that I can to, like, knock that stuff down when I can. I try to do research. You know, um, if any ex-evangelicals are, like, watching this and you've, like, you know, you've recently deconverted or you're, like, worried about this as a thing, Here's what I do, like, and this is kind of a thing that's worked for me. Um, I just tell people, you know, because when I was younger, I would try to, like, hide and cover, hide and cover, hide and cover. Like, just, just be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I knew that. And then, like, you know, run to the library and look it up. Or, like, later, you know, with the internet, just, like, go, like go, look, look, look. And try to see, you know, what the true answers are. Um, 
you know, I still do some of that. Like, I do a lot of, I, I train myself to do a lot of covering of my knowledge gaps. Um, I, that's still my instinct is to do that. But you may find that people are more generous than you're afraid that they will be if you just say, look, um, I grew up in a way that I was taught a bunch of things that were wrong and like I don't, I, I don't know, you know, um, sorry. Like I'm pretty brusque about it because I'm just like, well, Karen, I grew up in a cult. What do you want from me? Like I grew up in a cult. I don't know things because how could I? But if you don't want to go that far with it, you can like practice a script that works for you that's like, you know, I was raised in an evangelical church school and um, we were not taught curriculum that is like what happens outside of that world and so therefore I have some gaps in knowledge, um, you know, and I try to like read up on stuff and just if you are chill, other people will be chill generally and people who are, um, who I do not accept and you should not either people mocking you or trying to um, make you feel bad about that. <clears throat> evangelical children are not given choices. And if you were an evangelical child, you know that this is true. Um, we were not, we didn't decide that we wanted to go to these schools. We didn't decide that we wanted our educations to be messed up. So it's not your fault if you don't know things. And it's okay not to know things, right? You have the time now where you can learn them. You can always learn them. It's not too late. And like, as you have time, you can like fill those, you can start to fill those gaps in. And as you find more gaps, you can fill them in. And you know, it's not all bad because if you're working to do research and fill in these like base gaps of knowledge that you have, then you have a spirit of like research and that's good i think i mean i think for me i would not say anything about my experience in the christian uh school was good but i will say that over time i have tried to develop an attitude of um being really okay with not knowing things um you know if someone tells me that, like, well, that's not the latest research on biology, that doesn't hurt my feelings. <laughs> like, I know I don't know stuff about biology. You know, if, if people are like, well, that's not the latest on this or that's not what happened historically, I am not attached to being a person who knows the right thing. Um, you can't be when you've had the kind of education that I have had. <laughs> So, um, I think that it's, is, if you have a spirit of like, it's okay not to know things, you can always learn them. Then like, you can meet this as an interesting challenge. Um, you know, that you can like do at your own pace. And I think that's something that's really important, you know, um, I've gotten like really nice compliments about like some of the um, videos that I've made on fat activism for, you know, like, oh, you must have had a really great science education. I had a really bad science education, like as bad as it can be, but you can learn it, you know, and it's and it's left me without a lot of ego and hang ups in so far as being able to say. I don't know um, because I'm aware that I don't so that that's just my suggestion um, I was gonna say also um, bullying in the Christian school that I was in was horrendous it was um, worse than I've ever had anywhere else the adults did not give a single shit and they didn't do anything about it. The way that I left the Christian school was I was asked to leave for fighting. 
And the reason why I was fighting was, be and thank God this was before zero tolerance policies, but the reason why I was fighting was because from the day I started that school until the day that I was asked to leave, I was tormented all day long, every day, by a group of boys and some girls. And like, and no one would, I try, you know, like, oh, tell an adult. I tried that. Nothing happens. Nothing. They never did anything to stop it. Um, and it was mentally and physically brutal. It was th three or four years of just being terrorized and brutalized every day by other students with teachers who are like, it's your fault that they're doing this to you. Like, you should, like, cultivate a spirit of humility and that you should, you know, give it to Jesus and see, you know, what, like, Jesus has laid on your heart to, like, make them stop behaving this way. And that didn't work, but socking someone in the face, that worked um, because they stopped and then I got the leave, which is what I wanted. I feel like if I had known that the way for me to get out of a Christian school was to start wailing on people, um, I would have done it really sooner. I don't recommend that, but that's what happened. Um, it's, it's extremely bad. You know, the whole system is pretty abusive, and so, like, they're not really gonna give much of a shit about a little extra abuse from other kids. Um, let's see. What I have to say to evangelicals, I guess, about this is that, like, because this is my point, is that if your religion is true, if it's all true, and it's all self-evident, and it's all there in the Bible, and anyone can see it, and it's all right there, um, and it's just perfectly and demonstrably true, then why are you so afraid to let your children have any contact with the outside world? Why is it, if your religion is so strong and so true, why can't it hold up to even the lightest contact with literally anything else? Because the reason why they started these schools in the first place was because they were losing their kids. The kids would go into public schools go, or, you know, later go to college. They would get exposed to reality. And then they would be like, the things that I w was taught do not make sense. Because they don't make sense! It doesn't make any sense! If you spend five minutes looking at it, it doesn't make any sense. Like, you know, they were like, go read the Bible and it'll make sense to you. When I started having questions and like reading the Bible made it worse <laughs> because the Bible s doesn't say what they say it says. Or it says a lot of other stuff too. So, you know, they're isolating their children so that they can mind like brainwash them and like control their minds and like fully indoctrinate them to the point where there is no way out and that's bad it's bad it shouldn't be allowed it's bad and it shouldn't be allowed that i mean like there, there, it's it's if you're within the evangelical community you are going to church you go to school at the place that you go to church, and you go to church all the time. You do choir, you do youth group, all you do is church. If you're being abused inside the school that is part of your church, or in your church, where are you supposed to go? Right? It's really easy for them to hide what they're doing in the short term. Because no one has access to these children to see if they're okay. And like, that's not acceptable. Because a lot of them aren't okay. And then the, I guess the last thing I wanted to say was, and it kind of goes into this thing with isolation, is like, the reason why these schools exist, the reason why homeschooling has been pushed so hard by the Christian right, 
and evangelicals specifically, the reason why this is a thing is because basically in the 70s, they kind of decided, um, you know, as these things kind of filter out and, and like go in, you know, there's sort of people, I mean, it, it works like any other group, like there's intellectuals, people kind of come up with these things and then they filter out. Um, there is no evangelical Pope, but, um, there are people who are considered to be like, you know, the intellectuals and then like the things that they say kind of tend to filter down to different pastors and then down into the congregations. So, you know, I think it's weird for, for ex-evangelicals who are like younger than me to find out that like Halloween wasn't always like not allowed. Halloween wasn't always forbidden. Like when I was really little in the early 80s, we had Halloween. We had Halloween until I was like nine, um, maybe 11. And like, and then Halloween went away, which, which sucked because I love Halloween. Um, but like, it wasn't always that Halloween is like the devil's birthday and that you can't like, you know, you can't do Halloween because it's evil. That wasn't always a thing. That changed. So, you know, these things do kind of come out over time. So, kind of, there was an idea that basically if they wanted to win the culture wars, which they do want that, they're fighting this war, and I don't know why, like, people have just not paid attention to this, because it's like, you have no defense against the things that they're doing, you're not even paying attention. Um, but they're paying attention to you, that's for damn sure. They decided they wanted to win the culture wars because they were going to raise their children to be culture warriors. They were going to raise us up to be a part of God's army. That is what we are explicitly told. That you are special because you will leave here and go to Bible college and you will fight for the Lord. In like, you know, the realm of politics and business and, you know, the home. If you're a girl... But, um, it's fine to stay home if you want to, blah, 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 you know. Um, but, like, if you're an evangelical girl, like, staying home is basically your only option. Um, but they want to overwhelm with numbers. And that a small group of really dedicated people who've been indoctrinated into this shit since they were fucking babies are going to affect and change American politics. And guess what? That's what happened! That's what happened. Right? Like, I'm the washout of God's army. I'm AWOL from God's army. Which is why they fucking hate me the most. Because, like, I had access to the kingdom of the Lord, and I was like, no! I don't want this. But, they, it is... Christian schools for evangelicals are a part of a wider political project of um, extremism, uh, authoritarianism, and um, pushing politics as far to the to their you know very rightward and like anti democratic um, point of view as they can and. Um, that's another reason why these schools need to be exposed for what they are, which is indoctrination factories and child abuse factories. Um, children have a right to an education that's real and based on, like, facts. And I didn't get that. And it's made my life harder than it had to be. So... I guess that's, uh, that's all I have. Um, please check out, uh, Chris Stroop, Blake Chastain, and, um, please like and subscribe, uh, to the channel. It really helps, uh, other people to find my work. Um, thanks so much. I'll talk to you later.